radio for the masses. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. If the game is rigged, change the game. Game changer. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. This is Fade to Black with your host, Jimmy Church, on the Game Changer Radio Network. All right, good evening. How you doing? Fade to Black, I am your host, Jimmy Church. Today is Thursday, March 28th, 2024. Let's do this, man. Yeah, how you doing? All right. What an amazing week here um, on Faded Black. Robert Knight, Vivian Chavez, James Keenan. And tonight, finally, we got around to an AMA, AJA, Ask Me Anything, Ask Jimmy Anything. That's fine. Uh, just uh, put your questions in all caps. <laughs> That's it. And uh, I will, I'll will i just go through everything. I'll try to do it in order. Uh, keep it in all caps. If you want to post over on Twitter, you can. Hashtag F2B. Again, I'll put it in all caps so I see it. I've got Twitter live over here to my right. And uh, we're not broadcasting on Facebook. Um, uh, it looks like it's being fixed. I thought it was me. I thought it was something we were doing or something. Uh, it turns out uh, to be the software that we use. StreamYard is having issues and uh, they send everybody uh, email and notices that the issue is with Facebook and it's not anything else. Facebook is aware of it and is trying to fix it. So uh, that's a relief. But so don't post any questions on Facebook. You're not even on Facebook watching this. So you don't even know. So you're not going to post a question there. That's fine. Um, here in the chat, which is literally live in front of me. Put your questions in all caps right there. Um, it's a very busy chat room. Everybody knows that. And uh, so it's easier for me and my old ass eyes to see it if it's in all caps. And and I can catch it. I don't want to skip past it because with all the questions that are in lowercase, and you know, I mean, there's thousands that get posted during each show. So it's easier for me if I miss something, I can scroll through and catch it. Okay, so just put it in all caps. And uh, just makes life much, much easier. I really enjoy the AMAs and the AJAs. And I say this uh, uh, too often, but it's, it just needs to be repeated. Um, I, I do a lot of interviews. I do a lot of shows. I do a lot of things. But, but I get hired uh, to ask questions. That's fine. That's my gig. I, and, and I'm good at it. Not great. Getting better every day. But, but I'm good at it. And that's what people want from me. I get that. But because of that, <laughs> After all of these interviews, tonight is show number 1960, and that's 1,960 shows. That's a crazy number. We're coming up on show number 2,000, by the way. And I had said, you know, five years ago, uh, we'll celebrate again once we get to 2,000. And it just seemed like a number that we would never get. To. And it's coming up. It's coming up, show number 2,000. So when you do that many shows, you do that many interviews, and you combine that with all of the shows that I did over on Coast to Coast and the movies and the TV and stuff, I've I've interviewed a lot of people, and I've acquired a lot of lang uh, languages. I've acquired a lot of knowledge, and and I've I've traveled. I've had lots of private conversations, and, and I've hung out, and... And the things that go on at dinner parties at my house and the conversation, it's just a lot of knowledge up here in my head. Now, th those are going to turn into, all of that is going to turn into a couple of books. And I am working on those right now. In the meantime, one of the ways that I can just, like, let it out is with this, with our AMA and AJA. So, ask me anything. I'll throw it out there. It, it can be about anything. It doesn't matter. Uh, uh, conspiracy, UFOs, time travel, 
near death, whatever, my personal experiences, music, guitars, food, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, it's just a, a, a time for me to be able to sit here and hang out with all of you. And it's just like, it's like we're just hanging out. That's all we're doing. We're just hanging out. So that's what we're going to do. Okay, so again, post your questions in all caps. I haven't looked at any questions yet, so I don't know what's there. And also, you can uh, post over on Twitter at hashtag F2B. Okay, all right. Uh, With that, how do I actually want to get started? Well, I probably could get started by just getting to the first question. Maybe we should just do that. Um, I wanted to, uh, I keep talking about the, um, uh, the, the, the TV series that are, that are out right now. And there is a lot of them and I, I find it somewhat, um, well, ironic is kind of, well, okay. So ironic, you know, it's definition, you know, something that happens or something that it says and the opposite uh, happens from that. You know, that's irony. That's ironic. And so the uh, but it's just kind of weird. There's a type of irony involved uh, with this, and that is when you have so many TV shows come out at the same time. Uh, about ET and contact and and how that happens. And in this case, it's with a signal. The TV series Signal, The Signal, you've got a constellation, and you've got, of course, three-body problem. And now constellation, a little bit different, but not much. Um, constellation uh, has to deal with, I don't want to give anything away, but entanglement and duality um, uh, and parallel worlds and, and some other stuff too as well. But but is it that, do you have somebody from one team like informing, of, hey man, we're working on the script right now and it's about this. Is it that? Is it, um, oh, also the, uh, the, uh, there's a movie out, uh, called ISS international space station, again, dealing with the signal. That's, that's, that's pretty good too, by the way. And that's another point I wanted to bring up. There's like right now, like three, maybe four TV series or movies all dealing with the international space station. I have seen the inside of the International Space Station so many times now in the last month in these different series and and movies. And it makes, and I thought about this, and then we'll get started on the questions. Does Do they build a set to look like the International Space Station every single time? Or does somebody out there have one built and they rent it out like a soundstage, right? Oh, you're filming on it. Yeah, come, come on. We've got it. It's perfect. It's identical. You know, it, it, I would, you know, that's what I would, man. I would, if I had the money, I would build an international space station, put it in a warehouse in, in Burbank and put a four rent sign out front. But, uh, yeah, it's just, that's how my mind works. Anyway, so is, is somebody sharing information? Has somebody quit one company and gone to work for another? And, hey, man, I got this idea, and, and this is what it is. It's, it's very strange to me. It's, it's very, very strange. And then the origins of all of these stories, where do those come from? Well, they come from this community for sure. They do. Watching Gaia, uh, Fade to Black, uh, reading Jacques Vallée books. I don't know. But it is all of that comes from this community, for sure. And I just find all of that interesting. And, uh, and that includes even uh, the movie Spaceman with Adam Sandler. It's really good, by the way. Um, so there you go. That's, I just wanted to share that, um, every night after the show, um, I, I try to watch something. And then when I finally get to the weekend, if I have the weekend off, if I'm not traveling, 
That's why I like to binge. I try to just like get something in uh, so I can watch it. And right now there is just lots of really good programming on. All right. So with that, let's get to the first question. Let's start the scroll. First question up. Ah, it's from Renee. All right, Renee, what you got? Yeah, she sneaks in because she's first, and but this time she's really first. Um, she said, Jimmy, what would it take? Here, let me, I can, I can do this. I have the technology. Jimmy, what would it take for you to buy an electric vehicle? That's a great question. All right, what would it take? Uh, why haven't I bought one yet, too, as well? Um, okay. First off, up until now, like the now, now, there hasn't been, okay, there's, there's lots of reasons. There's, there's a lot, and all of them are valid. These are my reasons. Up until now, all electric vehicles are ugly. I've been waiting for the moment. That includes Tesla. One exception, I'll get to that, um, if I I remember. But, no, nah, Teslas don't look good. Now, there isn't a good-looking electric car. There's simply not. Why they don't just take something that's cool and make it electric, you know, something that's cool, a Camaro, a Mustang, right, a Corvette, <laughs> you know, uh, even, even, you know, just, uh, a, a good looking SUV or whatever. They, they just, they mess everything up. Now there are some that are, that, that are, they're, they're trying to get it. I, I just don't know why they've done that. And if you go back to like the original stuff, like the Honda Insight and things like who would drive? No, 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 no. You're not going to get me in that car period. So. That's that's one. They're, they don't appeal to me. Aesthetically speaking, no. Just no, no. I had a friend. This was back in like 1992. It was one of the craziest experiences ever. He, um, this is uh, at my office in, uh, in Burbank. And he's a customer. And we were talking about it. He goes, man, I built an electric truck. This is 1992. I'm like, what? Yeah, man, it's really cool. What did you do, man? I took my Toyota four-wheel drive, and I made it electric. Really? The next day, he comes up. He walks in the back door. I, I brought my truck. I said, let me see it. So I walk out, and it's a Toyota four-wheel drive pickup truck, the one with that little back window, right? It's not a, not a four-door. It's a two-door, but, it, you know, like that extended cab. And it's white. And I go, this is electric? And he goes, check it out, man. And he, in the back of the bed of the truck was a row, this is my memory, was like a row of car batteries, right? I don't know, dozen you know, or whatever, lined up in a row with cables on it. And he opens the hood, and there's an engine, a, a electric motor. It's like that big around, that long, and didn't take up any space. The whole engine's gone. The engine bay's empty. There's nothing there but this electric motor. And he got that thing hooked up to the transmission. I said, what? Really? And he jumps in. I, I, I drove it. You know, obviously electric, dead quiet. Took that thing in some circles. And it's like, this thing is the coolest thing ever. He built it himself. That I would own. All right. And, and this was 1992. So it looked like it was just electric. It was pretty cool, too. He had big mudder tires on it. So anyway, that's one reason why I won't buy an electric car right now. The Tesla truck is the exception. I think it looks cool. It's got a different look to it. I could, I would like to be seen driving that. I wouldn't look uncool. Okay, so there's that. All right. Second reason. They 
don't do anything for this planet. Okay? Yet. They don't. They don't. If everything was electric, everything, and that includes the mining equipment that's getting stuff out of the ground, the electricity going to the mining facilities for the lithium and whatever other stuff they have to mine out of the ground, and that is coming from solar power, right? a nuclear power plant, not a coal plant or anything like that, and that the deliverables were not done for the electric car uh, with semi-trucks burning fuel and, and all of that. If So... If that was the case, where you're getting a car that is not contributing to the issues that allegedly they're saving, then you're contributing to the problem. You're not solving anything. Just buy a gas car. Doesn't doesn't matter. The emissions, especially here in California, the emissions on cars, that's too efficient. Too efficient today. Right, You could practically breathe out of a tailpipe of a car. So there's that. The cost of owning an electric car. Okay, so you buy it. They're already expensive. The resale value is crap. Who's going to buy a two-year-old electric car? There's no resale value on that. The repair costs on them are horribly, it's really expensive. So you have that. So you're not saving any money. You're not, there isn't anything there. The cost of plugging that thing in, getting something added to your house and getting the jack and and all of that. And then you're pumping electricity into the car that's coming from, say, a coal fire plant. It's not coming from solar electricity unless you have a solar house. And so everything that is involved around electric cars, in my vision, is contributing to the issues today. That's today. That's where we are today. So it, it's not like I feel empathetic to Mother Earth that I'm safe. No, no. You are contributing to the problems. Okay? So there's that. Um and is there a third reason? Yeah, third reason. Third reason? I like a V8. I like the performance. I like the sound. I, I like mechanical things. I like mechanical watches. I like mechanical. I've got an analog studio, except for what you're looking at here is digital, but everything else here is cabled, right? Everything in here is cabled, right? I don't run Wi-Fi. I've got Ethernet cable. And so uh, I've got analog compressors. I just I have an analog world, and and I like that. I like a mechanical watch. I don't have watches. I don't have one watch with a battery in it. I've got a lot of watches, a lot of watches, all mechanical. I like that sound. I like that feeling. So until uh, there, uh, how how do I say this? Until there's no more gas. To go into my vehicles. And so maybe at that point, everything will get more efficient. We run out of gas, but by that time, we figured it out. We've got gas ships. I mean, we've got electric ships, electric planes, electric trains, electric mining equipment. We've got uh, solar power and naturally generated uh, electricity. I have no problems with nuclear power, by the way. Um, uh, it's a lot better than, than, than a coal fired plant. Um, there's a reason why China is so polluted, but so those are the reasons. And for me right now, I've got so many years left on this planet. I don't know how many I'm 60. I don't know how many, but I'm going to spend the rest of my time in this version of my meat sack. Happy, happy. I'm not going to no sacrifices. No, I'm just going to do it happy. What makes me happy? You know, I, the, the next, I'm not going to buy another vehicle. And if I do, it's going to be a Mustang, the V8. That's it. 
That's it. And even when we run out of gas, we'll figure out a way to to make artificial gas to keep those classic cars running. There's no way somebody's going to have a Ferrari or a classic Mustang with no gas or no way to run it. So there you go. Renee, fantastic question. Thank you for that. And uh, I've never had that question. I've never answered that question before. That is awesome. All right. Mystery Singer is up next. Jimmy, what's your favorite music story to tell us? Got a zillion of them. Okay. Off the top of my head. Off the top of my head. All right. I got this. This is just go. It's go time. Indianapolis, Market Square Arena. All right. Bob Seger's coming to town. And uh, I wasn't a Bob Seger fan, and especially back then. Today, I am. Bob Seger makes me cry today. Man, I really missed the boat on that. But anyway, it's one of the greatest writers and singers ever. But back then, high school, nah, no, 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 no. I was about Van Halen and Black Sabbath, right? So anyway, next door neighbor, Mark. He's got to go see Bob Seger, man. He's got to go see the Silver Bullet Band. So we go, tickets go on sale. We go to Washington Square, Ticketmaster. There is a line coming out of Ticketmaster. It was like upstairs above Sears or something, down the stairs, out into the parking lot. I'm looking. There's thousands of people. I was like, for Bob Seger? Are you kidding me? And so we get in line, and I don't even want to be there. And and we, we go through, and then they announce, okay, Bob has added a second show. Okay. All right. So it's not going to sell out. Okay. And then, and then as we're going, ah, the second show sold out. As we're in line, they added a third show. I go, a third show, three nights in a row of Bob Seeger. What is going on, man? So anyway, we get up and we are like two people away. Finally, after waiting in line eight hours, sold out, third show. I was like, thank God I don't have to see Bob Seeger. And the girl in the window says, but we got who tickets. I go, dude, the who? Cool. And he's like, ah. So anyway, we step up, we buy two who tickets. Split. Uh, a couple of weeks later, he gets Bob Seeger tickets, and we go to see Bob Seeger, right? Night three. And we go. And I'm I'm watching Bob Seeger sold out three nights in a row, Market Square Arena. Might have been four nights, to be honest with you. So anyway, we're there and it's packed. I don't want to be there, but I, I go through the show and I do it. Okay. It was like five days later, the who. And I go back uh to Market Square Arena and it's empty. The Who. It's the first tour with Kenny Jones. No, no, no Keith Moon. And and I go into the arena, and I'm with Mark, by the way. We go, and it's empty. We go all the way down to the front of the stage, and we get like two rows off of the floor right in front of Pete Townsend. Right there, right, right in front. I mean, there's his monitor, there's a microphone, and we're just up a couple, of, you know, the speaker. And I'm like, oh, this is going to rock. This is going to be cool. Anyway, so the crowd comes in. And I forget who was opening. That that part doesn't matter. But I remember looking around. The Who's coming on stage and Market Square Arena is half full. I later found out that this was the only night on the Who's tour of the United States that didn't sell out. And that was Indianapolis. But that's not the reason for the story. This is. So I'm right in front of Pete Townsend. And uh, and it's, dude, it's on. <laughs> they sounded so good. And Pete comes up. It's like the third song. And he goes up to his microphone and the monitor feeds back. I could hear it. And he kind of winces and pulls back. And he looks over to the side of the stage to the monitor guy that's over here in front of me. Points at his ear, points at the monitor, right? And he goes, eh, it, 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 and and he looks at the guy, and and they start the song, and and they're playing, 
All right. So Pete steps up to the microphone in the middle of this, and I'm watching him. I'm watching. I'm like, here it goes, man. He is not in the right mood. I could see, I could read the body language. He steps up to the microphone for the backup vocals of the the song. He takes his guitar, and I mean, I am 10 feet from him. He takes his guitar. Now, behind him, and I was watching this, uh, are these guitar things, and they had drawers with guitars in it, like dressers. And they're right there. And he takes his guitar off, spins around, and starts breaking it on his other guitars. Gage, 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 splinter, dad, kick, cat, cast. <laughs> He reaches into one of the drawers, pulls out another guitar, puts it on, plugs it in, steps up, no feedback. You damn skippy there wasn't. And fin- and I thought to myself, this, I almost missed this because of Bob Seeger. And if I would have, if we would have bought Bob Seeger tickets that night, uh, that day in line, I would uh, wouldn't have bought who tickets. I only had so much money. And that's, that's, that's rock and roll. And for me, I'm, I'm telling you, to see Pete Townsend lose it and, and splinter a guitar right in front of me, that's rock and roll. That's my music story for the night. There you go. Thank you for that, Mystery Singer. Uh, Mystery Singer's up two times in a row. Do we do this? That's breaking all the rules, isn't it? Uh, let's see what the question is. What's your most mind blowing spiritual experience you've ever had? I've had too many. Oh man, that's a good question too. All right. Okay, everybody. Just one question. I'm reading these in real time. So that's how this happened, but it's a good question. So I'm going to answer it. Um, most spiritual experience I've ever had. Ah, they're all kind of at the same level. Let me, let's see here. My, how about my last spiritual experience? Okay, let me think about this. Ah, okay, let's go with Amaru Muru. And it, um, oh man, hold on a minute. I happen to have right here a piece of stone from Amaru Muru. And on this side is a carving. And this is this is a Maru Muru. And this is the portal right here in Peru. It's on the side of a mountain. The T that you see here. God, who was I talking about uh talking with the other night? We were talking. Oh, uh, Jason quit. So anyway, that's a Maru Muru. And uh it's 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 huge. So I go. And I sit in that little thing right there, the portal. All right, that wasn't what was spiritual. What was spiritual was what happened after that, right? Okay. Wow, that's kind of weird that I thought about that. And I I have this sitting like this right over here. So back. And uh and everybody's kind of walking around or walking and, and I'm and I'm down in front of it. And this electricity just starts going through my body. It was like really weird, like electricity, like, and I feel it and it, my skin, everything's tingling like, like electricity, like a mild shock. And, and I was like, wow. And I look over to the person next to me who has also got this look on her face. I go, you feel you feel that? She goes, I do. I go, wow, this is crazy. And I just stood there. And it lasted for like two minutes. It was, it was crazy. Crazy. Now, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You know, the stories behind this portal and people disappearing and the magic of this. And, and I, okay. All right. All right. All right. I, I get all of that, but I don't think I've ever had 
that happened to me. Just like electricity. You know, in the middle of the desert, right? There's nothing there, right? Uh, you know, you're at 12,000 feet. You know, there's a little tiny village down the road when you turn off uh, the road to, to, to come up to a Marumu. I think that that's what the village is called, too. That's 100 people live there, like 10 houses. That's it. There's nothing there. So, yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty bizarre. Pretty bizarre. I didn't know what to do with it. I should have, uh, you know, I just didn't know what to do with it. But it was cool. It was cool. All right. Let's see what's next. This is from Darren. Darren says, Jimmy, what is your opinion on the movie Signs? And what is your plan when that day should come? Wow. That's a great question, Darren. Now, okay. First, the movie Signs, the first Mel Gibson, um, uh, uh, what's his name from Gladiator? I think they were both. Um, uh, anyway, um, Phoenix, Phoenix, what's his Joaquin Phoenix? Okay, so the first time I saw it, it was okay, didn't get it. I mean, I got it, but it didn't impress me. Um, I watched it again maybe a couple of years later. I was like, wow, I don't remember this movie being this good i have since seen it dozens of times and the movie is frigging fantastic all right it's fantastic i i think signs is up there uh there's some some great moments in the movie mel gibson the sheriff right he comes home and joaquin and his kids are sitting on the couch and they're all wearing tinfoil hats <laughs> watching TV, watching the news, and they catch, and that's when the alien walks by in the alley and does that thing and then kind of comes back, takes a look. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah, Signs was perfect. That was a perfect movie. Now, what do we do when when something like that actually happens? Uh, I think we're expecting it now. Years ago, I could say five years ago, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, and then all the way back. But but not too long ago, up until not too long ago, um, before all of this news started to break and everything else, but I think we it would have been a big deal. I think we would have been a bit freaked out. Today, I just, I, I don't think it's that kind of party. I think the news is out. Media has been covering it. TV has been covering it. Uh, TV shows, documentaries, movies. Man, the Marvel Universe certainly hasn't hurt, right? So I'm, I'm not so sure if there's a big freak out. Now, there would be a huge amount of industry created off of it. Yeah. How to make contact. How do we do this? How do we do that? And a lot of brain power and a lot of focus uh, would go into it. Um, but I don't think that there's, I, I just don't see the potential for a big freak out. I don't. And, and, and that's if it's a surprise visit. If it's something more planned, you know, look at uh, the, the, the new series uh, that's out right now, Three Body Problem. That's, that's four years until E.T.'s arrival. Four years at the speed that they were traveling at. That's a lot of warning time. You know, that's, that's, <laughs> there's all kinds of things that you can do and plan for and, and calm people down if people are excited or get people excited if they're calmed down. You have time to, to do whatever. But, uh, but if it's a surprise, eh, I just don't think there's a freak out. Depends on what country it's over, though. And that would, you know, oh, multiple countries at the same time, like the movie Arrival. And that could be different, too, as well. But, uh, man, that's a great question. Love the movie Signs. All right. 
let's see, Carrie Hughes. Carrie Hughes. Carrie says, Jimmy, where are you watching the eclipse from? I am watching it from the 70. Oh, sorry, Carrie is from, from Indianapolis, from the 70 and the three interchange. Four minutes of totality. Yeah, Indianapolis is getting a direct hit. And uh, I was planning on being in Indy. And as it turns out, uh, April 8th, I have to be in Los Angeles. So there's, I'm not going to be anywhere near uh, it. Uh, so I'll see what I'm going to see from, from here, which won't be much. But you guys enjoy it. Um, there's a, having it, uh, go across, uh, uh, North America like that, it just a huge swath of just right, right, bam, is pretty cool. So, you know what, you guys enjoy it. Uh, there's going to be a lot of, uh, a lot of towns that are right in the center, uh, of it all. Uh, it's going to be, it's going to be fun. It's going to be a big party. Um, it's going to be over before you know it. I was in the last uh, totality back in 2017, and that was up in, uh, where were we? We were up in Shasta. And there, I think we had 95%, 90%, 95%. I mean, I was looking straight at it, and it was it was covered. What was crazy about it, I'm going to share this for all of you that are about to go through this. This is what was crazy for me. Until, I mean, so it's getting closer and, and getting closer. And you can see things are kind of getting, you know, dark. And I, not, it's not dark, dark, but, but it's, you know, it's like gray, shadowy. But, Everything was normal. But when the totality hit, nearly instantly, the temperature dropped. Like, I don't know how many degrees, but you could feel it. Like 10, 15 degrees. It went from like warm to chilly instantly. Like, that was crazy. The next thing that happened that I noticed was the silence there was no noise like no wind no animals no bugs no nothing it was just like quiet that was pretty trippy how nature responded the third thing that i noticed which was pretty crazy and i had my glasses on i kept looking up everything lost its color it's it's daylight I, it, so you were suddenly like in this black and white sepia tone world. Yeah. It was it was like Silent Hill. It was weird. So it got cold. It uh got quiet and everything lost its color all at the same time. And it lasted for for I'm going to say like totality like that that Everything maxed out at the same about two minutes, and uh, and then you know because it's moving across, then a little bit more is peaking out. You can slowly see the color come back, and then the temperature came back, and then and then it was over. It was over. It it was uh, it was fast. So again, it was probably three minutes, three and a half minutes for the whole thing. But it was like two minutes of everything maxed out. No no noise, no color, and no temperature. It was weird. It was cool. I was glad I got to experience it. So enjoy it. What's funny is when it's over, everything, it's just like, well, the sun is there. Everything is just like, all right. Okay. So. But enjoy it. It is so, so cool. All right. Next up, this is Les. Les says, how does one deal with false hope? Who? What kind of false hope? What are you hoping for? To win the lottery and your lottery ticket doesn't? Your lottery numbers don't get pulled? False hope about peace on earth? Job promotion? I don't know, trying to get your wife pregnant and it ain't working out and you're hoping that you will. I don't know. 
Depends on what kind of false hope. Okay, but here, here's how I deal with it. I don't because I don't think about it. All right? Now, you, if you are working towards something, you're working on something, and you're hoping to to get the song finished, the book finished, the painting finished, your garage cleaned out, whatever it is, right? But you're working on it, that's a different kind of hope. So, but if there is something that you want to do, do it, then there is no false hope. You want to have whatever it is that you're basing your hope on to be in your control. If it's not in your control, don't hope. Just deal with yourself. Deal with your life. Dealing with it. Just work on that. Because whatever is going to happen is going to happen. That's it. That That's it. Why, why get your emotions and, and things all tied up in something that is simply not in your control? Now. But something great happens. You didn't have hope. You weren't thinking about it. Well, you kind of knew, but you weren't putting your mind on. You weren't losing sleep over it, right? But then, it ha- whatever it is happens. It, 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 then you have joy. It's like, wow, man, I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't thinking about it. I stopped thinking about it. This is cool, right? But if if it goes the other way and you're stressing and you're stressing and you're stressing and you're stressing, you're hoping and this and you're stressing and this, and the moment comes for whatever it is and it doesn't happen, then you got all of the bad times behind you that you were bummed out about, stressing out over this, and then you got that compounded with whatever it was that what you wanted to happen didn't happen. So therefore, just live in the moment. That's it. Don't don't. Put your stuff into something that you cannot control. You can't. Just go into the moment, man. Just just do your thing. Do your thing. Relative sick. Dog is sick. You're hoping that everything is going to be fine. All right? Ah. Uh, well, it's okay to think that way. Instead, live in the moment. Live in the moment. Live everything as best as you can. That's it. That's it. In the end, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. That's 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 how I deal with it. I, I've said it so many times um, that uh, I I have released negativity. I just don't do it. I don't do it. I don't do it. I don't do it. I've tried to build a life around me. It's not perfect. And I'm not perfect, but I tried to try to build a life around me that is stress free without negative things. I have no negative thoughts. I don't fight. I don't argue. I don't care. I don't get upset. I I, I just no. Don't do it. I don't do it. I just don't. I don't. I just do the things that, that, like I said, I've only got so much time on the life is so short. Life is, life is short. Uh, why, why stress on things that are out of your control? I'm taking out my calculator. Okay. Watch this calculator. Okay. So you have 365 days in a year. You live to the ripe old age of 70. That is 25,550 days. If you make it to 70. 25,550 days. That's all you got. Maybe you make it to 80. Maybe you make it to, I'm 60. Maybe you make it to 65. Okay, but I picked the number 70. It's 25,550 days. Now, that's it. That's all you got. So let's look at what I've got. I'm 60. So let's go 10 times 365. I know what the number is, but so if I make it to 70, I've got 3,650 days left. That's it. 
You want to spend one of those valuable days or one of those valuable minutes on on worrying, on negativity, on stress. I don't want to get to the end of that going, man, I was tripping on that those negative people, those negative vibes. I wasted days. I wasted weeks on that. I wish I could have had all that back, and I spent that with a smile on my face instead. And I've resolved. I don't want to be that guy. So I have resolved inside of myself that I'm just going to do me. I'm bringing all my friends along with me. Trust me, it's it's a good time. I'm, I'm a fun person to be around. <laughs> I am. I am. And 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 that's 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 it. So to stress, and I, I realize to stress on a false hope or a hope or a false hope. It's it, it, you're fed by the media. You're fed by the bubble. You're fed by social media. You're fed by different things and you know different belief systems and and somebody else's opinions or diagnosis or somebody else controlling your job promotion or your right whatever it is. That's all out of your control, man. And and why stra- Why why just every minute. That you are up and breathing, do it stress free. Live every minute that you can. That's, that's it, man. That's it. When I wake up in the morning, I used to sleep as much as I could. So if my eyes open in the morning, no matter what, I'd I go right back to sleep. It's like, man, I got I got to just sleep. Not, oh no, it's not that kind of party now. I go to bed at 2, my eyes are open at 7.30, I'm, I, I'm, I'm up. I do, not, I do not go back to sleep. That's wasted time. I'm up. <laughs> I might take a nap in the afternoon for 15 minutes, but that's it. I've got time to be happy, and I'm going to do it. So there you go. That's my advice. All right. All right. Where are we at here? Let's go to Ginger Turtle 43. That's uh, Richard Petty's number. Uh, Ginger Turtle. For, has the universe ever winked at you? Ah, are you talking about like three body problem? The winking? That was pretty trippy, actually. Has the universe ever winked at me? No, I guess, well. Not like that. If you're talking about three body problem, man, that would be a trip, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? I think the first time, if I'm going to equate anything to that, when I got winked at, <laughs> you're going to call it that. First time I looked through um, night vision goggles. First time. I mean, first time I looked straight up, right? Right up, right. Just point straight up. And I just. I'm like, wow, look at that. That's pretty cool. And I zero in on this, the brightest star, planet, whatever it is, above me. And I'm looking at it. And as I'm looking at it, it goes and stops. And, and I go back. I freak. And I, I put them back. And now I'm looking at where it moved to. And it goes. And moves back. I lost it. I lost it. That right there. That's that's why. That's why opiates exist right there. That's why vodka exists for a moment like that. I mean, I I my adrenaline. That was crazy. Probably a satellite moving back and forth up there. I or whatever. But but for me. To just see that the first time ever looking through night vision, I thought I was going to have a heart attack. I'm, I'm serious too. It was it was brutal. All right, let's see. Dicky Berg. Dicky Berg says, Jimmy, if you could travel back in time to see any performance, who would it be and why? Mm. Ooh, fa. Really? Uh, I've seen everybody that. Well, okay, you know what, Jimi Hendrix? Yeah. 
Yeah, Jimi Hendrix. Yep, that's it. I've seen everybody else. Never saw the Doors, obviously, but um, but I've seen yeah, I've seen all the big ones. I've seen the Stones. I've seen Zeppelin. I've seen Sabbath. You know, I've seen Priest. I've seen everybody uh, that that I can think of that I'd ever really Aerosmith. Uh, all of the old school stuff. I've, I saw all of that stuff. Nazareth, whatever. Ario Speedwagon. Um, I'm just going back thinking. Um, yeah, yeah, Hendrix. Hendrix. I mean, it's obvious why, right? I mean, dude changed the world. There's no question about it. Um, Elvis. Elvis. Never saw Elvis. Never saw Elvis. Saw Frank. Saw Frank Sinatra in concert. Never saw Elvis. All right. Uh, yeah, Elvis. Oh, man. Elvis or Jimi Hendrix? Ooh. Elvis or Jimi Hendrix? Elvis or Jimi Hendrix? Elvis or Jimi Hendrix? Elvis. I'm going Elvis. I'm going Elvis on that. I'm going Elvis. So there you go. I changed my answer. See, it took me a second. That's because I'm reading these live as we go through. Okay, let's see who is up next. Lord Nelson the Great. If God came to you and said, Jimmy, you can ask me one question. What would you ask? God, God, like God from the Bible, God. Mm. See, you know, why if you created man in your image, then why are there bad people why are there bad things that happen to good people that's not not the universe why do we this or that you know just, you know was jesus real not none of that i wouldn't i wouldn't go there but but if i had one question you know why why or are you are you are you just a bad person are you a mean person that would be two questions, but that's what I would ask. I want to know. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense how somebody, um, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Somebody that is just a pure soul, a good person, just never did, just a good person that something bad happens to, gets cancer, gets hit by a car, right? Stray bullet, comes through the window, whatever it is, you know, just some crazy thing, car accident um, from a drunk driver, which, you know, it's just even whatever it is, school shooting. Why, 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 why does that stuff happen? You know, and then somebody else is allowed, um, you know, I was watching Homicide the other day. This is a direct response to this question, Lord Nelson. I, I was watching that TV series on Netflix, Homicide. And there was an episode, I forget the guy's name. He's a business owner, owns an office supply company in Manhattan. Gets murdered in his office. Goes unsolved for 23 years. 23 years, the killers were free. You know who the killers turned out to be? His wife and her brother. And they did it for money. And they got away with it. Well, for 23 years. So for 23 years, the family doesn't know who did it. They've lost their son. And they go through all of that trauma, right, for 23 years. And for 23 years, 
his wife, who inherited the company, inherited the life insurance, got the house, got the house in the Hamptons, got the the vacation, got the, got all, got got everything, and of course her her brother, right, uh, and and they were allowed to live for twenty three years. Both of them ended up, uh, you know, they they got found guilty. Uh, but but that's that's an example right there. God, what what are you doing that for? I mean that that just that's not fair. That that right there that is not fair. That is not cool. So that's what I would ask. Why? Why? Okay. Uh, let's see. This is from Phil the Stalker. What is something? What what's something you like to do the old fashioned way? Hmm. Lot, lot lots of things. You know what? Coffee. Still make coffee the old fashioned way with a French press. Yep. French press, man. No automation, no nothing. French press. Yep, I do lots of things uh, the old-fashioned way. I just, I just do. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, I was, uh, I talk about my Harley a lot. Um, that is completely the old-fashioned way. Not only the way the bike is being built and finished, it's old school, but I have no electronics, no Bluetooth, no radio. No serious XM beaming into my head. Dude, it's a gas tank, an engine, wheels and tires, and leather gloves. It's just, that's it. I don't need, you know. Now, look, you do your thing. I, I, I get that. I get that. All right? I, I don't have rabbit ears on my TVs. Okay, so it's not like I'm that old fashioned. I'm not a Luddite, but but there are things that I still like to do that way, like the French press. Um, yeah, and I've got all of you've seen my coffee set up. I could, if I have company over, I've got 20 people in my house, 25 people in my house. Yeah, well, okay, I'm gonna fire up the coffee machine, but for me, when I'm alone, French press. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there you go. All right. Uh, there's other things too, but I'll leave it right there for now. All right. Let's see who is up next. Uh, this is from Grace. Would you play us a song? Oh, when? Like right now? Now, now? No, I won't. Uh, I just uh, don't have the. I'm not set up. I, you know what? I tell you what. The next AMA, I'll I'll, I'll play. I'll play. I'm just not set up. Amp's got to get warmed up. Uh, microphone's got to come in. I've got to get levels. Guitar's got to be in tune. I'm not going to sit here, pull down a guitar, plug in, wait for the amp to warm up, check levels, do all of this live on the air. I'm not going to do it. And then play a chord inside of couldn't, and then I got to tune it for it. No, not not. But 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 next AMA, Pinky Promise, right now. I'll, I'll, I'll play something for you guys. All right, I'll shred. I'll fully shred. I'll fully shred. Okay, we need to take a break, so we're gonna get that in, and let's uh, let's just do that now. Let's get our break in. I'll be right back. This is A J A A M A. Ask me anything. Ask Jimmy anything. Put your questions in all caps. I'll be right back. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, get your alerts, and access to over 2,000 videos. Click that subscribe button right now.
Go to JimmyChurchRadio.com and get the Fade to Black official podcast. 2,000 episodes, all of them commercial free for just $2 a month. This is Jimmy Church. Please visit and explore Egypt this October 3rd through the 14th, 2024 with Billy, Elizabeth, myself, and very special guest and the number one podcaster in the world, Sean Kelly. It's simple to do. Just go to ForbiddenKnowledge.com and click on Upcoming Tours or click on the link below. We'll see you there. Watch Into the Vortex on Gaia TV. It's fade to black for the screen. Simple to do. Go to Gaia.com, search Jimmy Church, or click on the link below. Follow Fade to Black on Twitter at J Church Radio. Get all of the show updates every single day. It's it, it's now called X, but who cares? How you doing? Jimmy Church here. Special announcement. Get your Fade to Black t-shirts. That's right. Help support the show. Help support everything that we do over here. We've got two t-shirts. We've got two ways to get them. And right now, if you get a Game Changer membership for a limited time, you will get Fade to Black Blend Coffee with your Game Changer membership. That's right. We have two t-shirts. We have the original, the classic Fade to Black t-shirt. You know you want one. Post a picture. Send it to us. We'll put it in our Fade to Black gallery. And we've got the new official Fade to Black t-shirt drawn by Michael Oming. Two t-shirts, two ways to get them. Get yours today. Everything is in stock. Everything gets autographed. Everything includes shipping, and you're going to get a tracking number. And with a Game Changer membership, you get an email to me. You get unlimited commercial-free downloads of the show. Those are uploaded every single night after the show to the website. So don't delay. Get your Fade to Black t-shirt today. Go Backley Tappy. Go to JimmyChurchRadio.com and become a fade or not. Get a membership. That's right. Everything is commercial free. You have access to downloads and you get to call yourself a fade or not. River Moon Coffee, makers of the fade to black blend. Truly the best coffee on planet Earth. Just visit rivermoonwellness.com or, or their Amazon store. It's all simple to do. You can check out the Fade to Black Blend, the Game Changer Blend, or any of their Black Moon Wellness products. It's the only coffee I drink. It is the best, and it's Doc. Again, rivermoonwellness.com. All right. Welcome back. Fade to Black. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. A-J-A-A-M-A. Post your questions in all caps, and I will uh, see them. All 
So that's what it is tonight. Ask me anything. Let's just get straight back to it. I want to get as many questions in as I can. Uh, see Twitter. What's the longest distance or hours that you have traveled with the Harley so far? Uh, full tank of gas, whatever, whatever that equates to. Um, no, half a tank. Go in one direction. Uh, I've done this many, 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 many times. Go out uh, half a tank and then turn around and come back and run that thing down onto reserve. I've, I've, I've come back into town with that thing, reserve light on, and then hit that. I haven't run out of gas yet. But uh, so that's I've done that many times. So I don't know. I think it's probably 150 miles on a tank or so, something like that. So 75 miles in one direction and then turn around and 75 miles back. I've done that many, many, many times. So I think this weekend I, I am going to... Uh, shoot a video of all the upgrades and, and changes I've done to the bike uh, so far. And I'm at a point now with it where I'm cool. The next few things that have to happen on the bike are, are big ones, like the exhaust, handlebars. Uh, well, that's it. That's it. I've, I've done everything to the bike that I can uh, up to this point. So I'm going to, and I've done a, a ton of stuff to it. So I'm going to shoot a video and uh, uh, I'll get it up uh, this weekend and everybody can check it out. So there you go. All right. Next up, let's see from, what is that? You follow? Did Ingo Swan foresaw foresee foresaw foresee his own death it's the oldest you know it's like one of the oldest jokes in the book right um uh you know with a with a medium or fortune teller or, or prophet or or anything like that did you see that coming <laughs> well i guess not um uh i don't know um and i would think that somebody like ingo um, had had an idea that something was up. So I'll just leave that right there. I don't know. I don't know. I've never heard anybody talk about that and or any quotes from him uh, concerning that. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know. If you are somebody that, you know, claims to uh, pick lottery numbers or whatever, uh you you had better uh be really rich like i'll pick your lottery numbers because i've picked the last 10 <laughs> you know what I, you know I, I, there's just there are certain things now there are visions and people have visions about things and earthquakes or plane crashes or uh, you know catastrophes and and stuff um so I'm not saying that that kind of stuff doesn't happen, but can you direct it and, and be very specific? And especially uh, if it's that personal, like your own death, I, you would think, right. You would think that you would know. And and if you did, would you tell anybody? And I don't know. I don't know. That's, that's a, that's a really good question. Okay. All right. Let's see. It says from Isaiah. Hey, Jimmy, huge fan. What happened to Carrie Cassidy from Project Camelot? Don't know. I haven't talked to Carrie. I haven't seen Carrie. Man, I don't even know the last time I saw her. Uh, probably last time I talked to her. I mean, I'm assuming uh, I don't follow her or Project Camelot. Uh, anymore only it's a time that I don't follow anybody I, I I just don't have the time to do it so I'm assuming she's still doing her thing you know I don't know or are you saying that she has stopped Project Camelot I, I don't know I don't know um, but I haven't talked to her Oof, man it's been a minute it's it's probably it's 2024 
so probably 2014, 2015, somewhere in there. I don't know. Somebody knows the last time she was on Fade to Black. That was like the last time. Uh, I remember seeing her, yeah, it was probably 2015 at uh, the Conscious Life Expo. She was walking around, and and we talked and, and said hi. But, man, no, I haven't. Mm-mm. No. I uh I don't know. I, that I just don't have an answer. That's that's worth looking up. Somebody should post it in the chat. Is she still doing her shows or something that I don't know? All right. Let's see. This is from Jonaside. Music question. Best rhythm guitarists. Mm. Brad Whitford's pretty good. Uh Malcolm Young. Uh, best rhythm guitarist. Mm. Mm. You know who's pretty good? His He doesn't really play guitar. So, you know who's a really great rhythm guitarist? Dave Grohl. Dave Grohl is an amazing, amazing guitarist and rhythm guitarist. You know, it's really weird. You know who is... Uh, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go on the record here because technically not a rhythm guitar player, but Eddie Van Halen played rhythm guitar as good as he played lead guitar, and that's a crazy statement. But he really, really wrote songs, and and his rhythm guitar work was just stellar. Stellar, stellar, really, really good. But like rhythm guitars in in a in a five piece band, you know, bass guitar, drums, guitar, singer, five, you know, five piece, four piece. Um, yeah, man, Angus Young was uh, a- Malcolm Young was amazing. Brad Woodford uh, from Aerosmith, really good, really good. Um, there were a few bands with two guitar players, two lead players, and that also played rhythm that were really, really good too as well. So, um, you know, you got to think about something like that. Like when you look at a band like Iron Maiden, right? Uh, dude, everybody in that band plays amazing rhythm guitar. Everybody, everybody in that band. Uh, really good. So, and like, you know, look at Pearl Jam, too, as well. But Dave Grohl, I know it's kind of a weird thing to say, right? Uh, Dave Grohl is frigging like not of this earth great. So, uh, yeah, that's a yeah, genocide coming in strong there. Okay, let's see, Bushcraft. On horseback, are you prepared for an EMP event? And if so, how are you prepared? Nobody is prepared for an EMP event like a real one. Nobody, nobody. Unless your house and uh, that includes your car and everything else is inside of a Faraday cage. And I don't even know if that that would help in a real EMP. Um, You know, is your house encased in lead? Do you live underground? Do you live in a cave? Um, everything else that, you know, now, do I have emergency food? I do. Do I have a bug out bag? I do. I've got portable stoves. I've got solar powered batteries. I've got wind up radios. I've got all of the food that you can imagine. I have bottled water. I have flashlights coming out the yin yang. Um, I, I look around me because I've always got, there's one over there. I don't want to reach for it. There's one right there. It's probably another one just as close up oh, right here. So, and, and I'm not kidding, right? I'm a flashlight addict. Right. And like, like for real, like, okay. And, um, so in my Jeep, I have got rope, I've got chains, I've got water, I've got tools, I've got uh, a a tire inflator, I've got uh, solar power uh, in the Jeep, uh, battery charger um, uh, in the Jeep, 
right at first aid kit. All of that is always in the back of the Jeep. That's always there. So no matter what, right? Um, I've even got a bag, uh, I'm not kidding, in, in the Jeep of beef jerky. So if if I get stuck when something happens out there, at least I can survive on beef jerky and water <laughs> for for a few days. But but if 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 an EMP hits, then the the electronics in my Jeep are not it's not going to start and neither is the Harley. So you better have a bicycle. Right, that's the other thing. You need you need to get around at the very least rollerblades. But all of the emergency food and everything that I have here, that's more for like an earthquake or or something else that that would happen. But if an EMP happened, our electric our our grid goes down. All right? Everything's everything that we're used to, cell phones, everything that's worthless. It's worthless. The satellites won't, you know, that's it. So, well, that's where the emergency food and and all that propane and butane and things that I have, which I do, and matches. I've got matches and lighters, by the way. Uh, I've got all that stuff. So I can still uh, uh, cook on my gas grill or fire up my portable stove. Um, <laughs> and somehow get through a week. <laughs> I've got enough. I've got enough uh, emergency food to to last probably three months. I don't have the water to last that long. But but anyway, yeah, I'm as prepared as as I can be. Which is you really can't prepare for that. Not an EMP. All right. Let's see. Cassidy, thoughts on Egypt. Man, what you want me to just talk for the rest of the show on Egypt? Thoughts on Egypt. Okay, you know what the, you know what the first thought on Egypt is. If you haven't been there, go. That's it. My thoughts on Egypt. Do they do they really matter? It's such a personal experience. You need to go there for yourself and experience it. All of the reading, all of the documentaries, everything that I had learned, all of the interviews, everything that I did not prepare me for Egypt. It just didn't. Seeing it was wonderful and and walking around and experiencing it. But uh, that is something that you have to do for yourself. You just got to go and and see it, touch it, smell. There's a smell. It's It's incredible. It's absolutely incredible. You just you just have to go. Now, if I have an overall thought, the overall thought is, and it doesn't really matter where you are, Dendera, Abydos, Kamambo, Karnak, Luxor, Bent Pyramid, Step Pyramid, Great Pyramid, Sphinx. I can go on and on and on, right? Hello, symbol. Doesn't matter. Wherever you go, you just look around and you're just, what the? That's what you do. Man, go to Elephantine Island and walk around there in the Nile River, Temple of Isis, in the middle of the Nile. Go to Elephant and walk around. He's just like, what? Huh? That's 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 my thoughts on Egypt. And no matter what you do, you know, I have got um so many books, so many documentaries on Egypt, and I'm constantly reading, constantly, constantly, and I I look at it from different perspectives. You've got like Christopher Dunn, right? You've got Robert Shock and 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 those books and Scott Cawthorn. If, if you just go and it, 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 all of that, right? You have all of that. Robert Baval, right? You've got all Graham Hancock. You've got all of those books, which I have read them all. And then I've got the intellectual side, ancient history of Egypt. I've got 
um, academic books on the history of ancient Egypt, I probably have a dozen, dozen college insane. And, and I read those too as well. And I, I, all of the prep did not get me ready for seeing it in person. It's, it's, it's beyond description. Peru's the same though. Peru is absolutely the same. There's no difference in the impact that it, that it has on you. So, but, um, but go to Egypt. You need to, you know why you need to go to Egypt? You have seen pictures of the Great Pyramid too many times. You've seen the Sphinx too many times. You've seen King Tut's mask, gold mask. So you've seen that too many times, right? And it's amazing. You've seen it too many times. You need to just go and see it for yourself. Really, I mean, lay eyes on that stuff. It's crazy. It's absolutely not. So that's my thought. My thought on Egypt is go. Go. I, Jimmy, I can't afford it. Get a loan. Beg your parents for money. Right? Sell something. Go to Egypt. Go, go, go. What did I say? How many days left? How many days left do, do you have? Okay. So thirty six fifty for me. Thirty six fifty. You want to waste one of those days goofing around at Costco? Or would you rather be out in Saqqara? Would you rather be in Abydos? I'm just saying. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jim, uh, Jimmy, what's your, what's your take on Pan Spike? Uh, this is good. Um, that everything in the universe is consciousness. Yes, man. You know, yes. Say it. Say it every show. Every show. It's. I, I think that's the answer to everything. That's the answer to everything. Yeah. Uh, th it, there is. There is something connecting, propelling, vibrating everything. Now, we use the word consciousness. It could be a lot of, you know, uh, technically, will we use that word? You know, E.T. gets here. Will you call it consciousness? That's really not, okay, we call it this because, but, but and here's why. I, I would not be surprised if that is the, the gift that we get from E.T., you know, and, and, and although I've, I've said this many times on the show, but I'll say it again. It will not surprise me that all of those atheist, non-spiritual, chemically driven, pragmatic physicists and scientists um, all suddenly go, ah, yeah, I know. We knew that all along. Right? It's going to be like that. It's going to be like that. I said on the show a couple of weeks ago, and I just kind of blurted it out. I've been thinking it. I just never said it out loud. That dark matter, right? Dark energy. These two things that we call dark because we can't see it. But allegedly we know it's there. And well, I say allegedly because can't nobody nobody's seen it or measured it or anything, but we see the effects of it. All right. So uh I think that's consciousness. I think that's what we are wondering about. Yeah. And and I know that I said this originally because of what Brian Greene wrote in his book, Till the End of Time. And the way that he writes it in the book, and I know what he was trying to say, he just didn't want to offend his his, his fans out there by using the word consciousness. But that's what he meant. That's what he meant, that the last thing, when everything burns out and everything is done, and the last particle is broken apart, and there's nothing left anywhere, you know, uh, trillions and trillions and hundreds of thousands of trillions of years in the future, when everything just goes and is over, the last thing, the last thing is going to be thought. It's his words. 
he uses the word thought. I say consciousness, and that's what he's trying to say. I think I think Brian, in his old age, and he's gray now. That's, that's so crazy to see how gray he is. That that's what happens to all physicists. They get to that age, and they start getting all philosophical and spiritual, and and start thinking about time and time travel and life after death, and they 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 go full spiritual. They can't do it when they're at the peak of their career. They can't do it. He just can't do it. It's not the, what the community is based on. But when you get to a certain point in your life, you know, you cross 60 and you start to, you know, re- realize that mortality is like a real thing, at least this version of us. And you start to, you start to go vocal. You start to go public about things. And I think that's what he did in that book. So, uh, there you go. Mr. Pritchard, that is a great question. All right, let's see what's next. And this is the gate of knowledge. When the solar eclipse happens on the 8th, do you think all of your senses will heighten? Yes, I, I, I talked about that earlier. Think that might be able to move to another dimension? Thanks. I don't know about that, but, man, I'm telling you, nature's a funny thing. Right, where insects and and animals and things and life and all that stuff that that moves around and makes noise and and the sun just goes away in the middle of the day, that freaks nature out. And yes, when you when you suddenly lose your ability to see color and the temperature drops like that, uh, like uh, you know, and it you'll you'll experience it. It's a trippy thing. But the silence, yeah. Oh, you're very aware. It's an, it's, and man, and uh, to have that and what's that called? The devil's comet, the demon's comet happening at the same time. That's pretty wild. Um, that's a, that's a pretty big day. It's a pretty big day. By the way, I've seen the comet. It's pretty, pretty crazy to look at. Um, you think that uh, we'll be able to move into another dimension? Ah. You know, well, I went through one. I didn't necessarily go through. You know what, though? Um, uh, I'll say this. I, I I touched upon this earlier. Silent Hill. Okay? Silent Hill. Now, okay. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let me stay right here. Let's talk about this other dimension part. Okay, I mentioned uh, the TV show Constellation. Everybody go and watch it, all right? I don't want to give anything away. I don't. It's too special of a series. And the last episode is going to rip you apart. It is. It is. It's It's. It's going to make you think. It's going to get to all of your emotions. It's really, really well done. In the same way that Silent Hill does. So... The idea of going into, let's talk about the Mandela effect or parallel worlds, right? There's another world that's just like this. There's me talking, right? Okay. And so there's a probability and and everything else in the multiverse that there's another world, another earth just like this, and there's another me, there's another you, right? Okay. But everything is just a little bit different, right? So if you step into that world and experience it, what if everybody's favorite color is like beige? What if grass isn't green, that grass is like gray, right? What if the sky isn't blue? What if the sky is, you know, another color, right? Let's let's say blue. Hand, right? And then suddenly everything is just a little bit off and you step into that world. Now everything looks like, you know, you see cars, but everything is just, just a little bit, you know, still speaking English, whatever, but, but it's just, everything is just off by a degree all the way around. And it, it's, it's so if you stepped into that world 
and I go up to my daughter, Nicole, in that world, does she recognize me? Well, maybe she does. But but am I acting like her dad, me, in that world? Is my personality the same? Is it a little bit different? Do I smell the same? Do, you know what I mean? Does she smell the same or does she act the same? Would, you know, it, it, it's like that. And so for a moment during the eclipse, it's kind of like that. For those three minutes, man, another dimension, you're stepping into Silent Hill. Yep, yep. It's only three minutes. It's a good thing it's not 24 hours. This this planet would lose its mind because everything is 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 different. It's crazy. All right. Uh, let me get as many of these in as I can. I have no idea how far behind I am. This is from Matthew. Have you heard anything about NASA finding a planet with artificial light? I have. What do you know about it? I know that um, what I have heard, and I've shared it on the show, I have talked to uh, many people um, on the inside, some are saying, eh, no, 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 not happening. Haven't heard anything. I have others that are going, yep, definitely going on. So in a nutshell, now there's different versions of this floating around. But overall, the overall arching answer is it appears that there's more than one group. So let's just say two could be four could be six but let's say there's more than one group so let's go two groups two groups that have identified a planet with the technical tech techno signature but they're not the same planets they're two different planets and the argument is which one do we reveal do we reveal them both or do we reveal just one and that's this debate that apparently is going on. They found something. I don't believe it's biological, like they've got, you know, some kind of biosignature. No, I think that uh, something has been seen, something that is technical, and something that is not natural. And they've seen it on two different planets. So that's, that's what I know. Um, and specifically the planets, uh, I will, uh, uh, what planets they are, I'll talk about on another, I've talked about them individually on shows in the past. I just don't have that information right in front of me. And I don't want to say it's X, Y, Z, one, two, three B and it's A, B, C, four, five, six, uh, C. I don't want to get that, that wrong, but that's what I've heard. Yes. I've absolutely heard that. All right, let's see who is next. Uh, this is Kevin Hero 66H. What is your take on Tony Rodriguez? Oh, Tony Rodriguez. Okay, Tony. Um I've only talked and I don't even know now, but I've talked to Tony Rodriguez twice on the phone. Now, is it the same Tony Rodriguez that is out there today? I'm assuming that it is. Okay, so um, Tony, I, I just it's a it's it's a tough call. It's a it's it's a tough call. I have not interviewed Tony. I've had a couple of conversations with him, uh, probably five years ago. Um, I haven't talked to him lately. I don't know what his uh, recent information is or what he's talking about or is if he's still out there talking. I, I don't know. I haven't seen him on anything. But um, it's a tough call. And it's a tough call with anybody that when it comes to now, listen, I don't want to change anybody's belief system or what you're researching or what you think is cool and what you don't or anything like that. It's none of my business. You do your own thing. But when it comes to super soldier experiences 
off planet. I, we are in an area of believability that gets a little rough. Okay. And that, that part of it, uh, not only for the community, there are some that go, well, okay, I, man, I'm, I'm into this. Great. That's cool. That's cool. But you need to have certain things back that up. And what you can't do, and I'm not talking about Tony specifically, I'm saying in general, the whole super soldier off planet stuff is if you're going to make these claims, you cannot depend on, well, uh, they erased everything or they took my idea or it was a secret program or is this and, the, and all you've got is your story. I'm open minded. I listen to everything. I do. I do. I listen to everything. I don't believe everything. Can't. Can't. I stay right in the middle. But in in the words of Leonard Susskind, the physicist, everything is probabilities. Anything that can happen will happen eventually. All right? So if 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 you just look at life that way, you know, and somebody says, I've got crazy stories. I do. I do. I've got crazy stuff to say. Uh, I don't even know if it's real. But um, I expect everybody to give me the same respect that I give to others when I listen to them. All right? So Tony falls into that camp. I'm going to listen. But in order for me or anybody else that, that is in the middle, that is open-minded and listening to the stuff, um, you need to have something back it up. You just, you just have to. You have to have. But look at somebody like, here's, okay, let's look at David Grush for a second. All right? Not, not, he's not a super soldier, but he said some crazy-ass shit. And so what what's the difference between David Grush and his claims of crash flying saucers and and reverse engineering and alien bodies and pilots on ice and all of that stuff? Okay. So that's crazy stuff. But what has Grush got to back it up? Well, UAP task force. He's got a CV. Member of the military, member of the intelligence community, right? Government official, list of credentials a mile long. That's what, if you are going to go into the super soldier off planet world, you need to have you need to have something to to back that up. And Grush, as crazy as those statements were of his. He's got that stuff to back it up, right? I, I heard he lost his security clearance, understandably so, but he had a security clearance, right? Took an oath and went in front of, of Congress. That's, uh, you, there, that puts some weight behind his words. So that, that's where I stand on the whole super soldier thing. You, you need something to back that up. There you go. Tony seems to be a nice guy, though. I'll say that. Seems to be a genuine, uh, really nice guy. Cassidy, will humanity achieve our potential? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We can. We can. One of the things, Cassidy, is such a great question, and I don't want to wax all philosophical right now, but... But when we go back and look at so many different um, uh, examples that have been laid out from theoretical physicists, astrophysicists, and you know, very smart, bright people, uh, Fermi paradox, and Fermi, and everybody else, uh, Frank Drake, that a civilization has to survive in order to achieve evolution. You can't die out. Yeah. You can kill yourselves. You Earth can get hit by a, co a comet or an asteroid. 
That's out of our control. There could be some crazy disease that knocks everything out. There could be that. Uh, if, 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 if cosmic burp, you know, an EMP from the sun. Anything could just like get nuts here. So you have to survive. Just like Mick Jagger said, right? The, the famous quote. How do you explain the Rolling Stones' success? Well, you know, the band never broke up. <laughs> right? It's the same thing with humanity. Right? We have to, yeah, of course we can achieve our potential. And, and I think that we will. Um, I don't think we're going to kill ourselves off. It would take, you know, some crazy alien invasion, some kind of cosmic uh, thing. I, I, you know, what, what if uh, uh, some rogue planet just floats in, and there's a lot of them, floats into our star system and just hits Earth? Doesn't it have to be an asteroid? What if, a rogue star? <laughs> you know, some crazy thing. What if Jupiter ignites? Right and turns into a sun. It should have been a sun. It just just stopped. But everything is there for it to be a sun. What if something happened in Jupiter where suddenly it's it's into fusion and that thing brightens up and then there's a sudden gravity change and we've got two suns and our planet starts to wobble in between the two of them. What if that happened? That's something that uh, Arthur C. Clarke you know, as, as as talked and written about, kind of like the three body problem. That's a star system with three planets and a and a planet that doesn't know where to orbit. <laughs> right? It's like all whacked out. Right? So there's all kinds of things that could stop us. But if if things maintain, right, we stay in this position from the sun. The sun keeps stable for another million years. It's supposed to be stable for another, you know, couple billion years. But let's say every, you know, barring anything else going crazy and we don't get into a thermal nuclear war, you know, if we manage to get through that, we will achieve our full potential. We will. We will. That We don't have a choice in that. All right. Next question. Green screens. What? Who? When? Me? Those aren't green screens. That's not a green screen. Is that what you're talking about? People ask me that all the time. You follow. You haven't seen this show enough. I've had guests on the show during sound check, you know, first time guests. Dude, man, that's an awesome green screen. How do you get that to work? It just works so well. I don't see it around your head. I'm like, yeah, I know. It's new technology. What do you mean? It's it's new technology. What are you talking about? Because I can do this. I can turn around and and grab. Oh, it's not a green screen. Oh, I get. Yeah, yeah. All right. So anyway, this is not a green screen. As much as you would like to think it is, it's not a green screen. Oh no, no. That's what you're talking about. Okay. Let's see, Andy Oates. Andy Oates, what is your own personal UFO interest origin story? Ah, that's easy. I've told it a lot, Andy. Great question, worth repeating. I don't want to say his last name, but my best friend in fourth grade was this guy, John. Now, at that time, and this is 1972, so I'm eight, nine years old, fourth grade, eight years old. And uh, and at that time, Chariots of the Gods had come out. UFO, the TV series is on. Space 1999 is on. Um, and two great series, and and John and I, the Apollo program, and and space, and everything was going on. Right? It's it's just like crazy time. It's a good time to be a kid. And so, UFO, the TV series, and. Uh, unidentified flying object. And it was funny how they would say it on the show, right? UFO. Well, anyway, so that's, that's, that's my origin story. And I went down to the library and uh, in fourth grade, grabbed uh, an encyclopedia, opened it up, UFO, it's right there. And it had a picture of the Rex Heflin 
UFO. And, uh, and that's my origin story. That that started me when I saw that Rex Heflin photograph. Uh, let me see if I, I'll I'll, pu- I'll pu- pull it up right here. Rex Heflin, so you guys know what I'm talking about. UFO. Okay, so Rex Heflin it took these pictures in um, in I think 1966. And so when he took this image, oh, man, really? Are you going to do that to me? Are you really going to do that? When he, I hate it when it, you try to save a photo and it saves as a web image. Okay, this one did not. Rex. Okay, let's pop that on the desktop. Boom, done. This is Rex Heflin. Uh and Rex changed my life. Let's see here. Hold on. Where'd Rex go? I saved that to my desktop. But for some reason, it didn't save there. Let me do it again. I will do it again. Desktop. Boom. I better save. Okay, there it is. Ah! Okay, so, man, that is just awful looking. Let's see if this one's better. Hold on. Yeah, this might be a little better. Okay. All right. Sorry, 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 everybody. But uh, yeah, this is a good picture here. Okay, so yeah, I pop pop open uh, the encyclopedia, and this is the picture that was there, and I it changed me. This is my UFO origin story. I've I've, I've told this story a lot, and and so this is in Santa Ana, California. He took six pictures. Um, he was working for the county. This is his work truck. Takes pictures from the side, from the front. This is out the front window, or this out the side window. And um, now, just take take a really good look at that. That's that is pretty crazy. That's as far as pictures go. That's about as nuts as it gets, right there. And I don't know how to. Um, how to resolve this in my own eight-year-old mind. That's crazy. And there are so many that, that he took at different angles. And the last picture that he took was a ring of smoke um, in, in the sky. Uh, and that was it. And then it was gone. Um, I, I, that, that's it right there. Rex Heflin. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, I, I just remember my tiny little brain just looking at that and and trying to figure out how that how that's flying, who's in it, what's going on. There you go. So that's that's my UFO origin story, right there. Yeah, Rex Heflin. Yep, and isn't it interesting how Encyclopedia Britannica, or whatever, I'm assuming that's what it was, um, chose that image for their article on UFOs in the encyclopedia. They chose that. But, man, that marked me for life. To this day, I still trip. I I think it's, it's, you know, if, if... not one of the best, the best UFO picture of all time. Next question. Jimmy, if you could buy a sidecar for your Harley, I wouldn't. Uh, would you ever buy? Oh, I thought it said should. <laughs> Jimmy, would you ever buy a sidecar for your Harley? No. So you could take a dog for a ride with you or Richard Dolan. Nah, screw Richard. And no dogs. And no passengers. I have a solo seat on my bike. There's no pad. There's no rear foot pegs. And that's it. 
That's it. I don't care if uh, I, I, I'm just trying to think of somebody. <laughs> I don't care who it is. I, picture the most beautiful person in the world, male or female, whatever it is that comes to mind, right, for you. And you have a Harley, right? Do you give them a ride? Well, that's up to you. So whatever is in my head here, whatever that could be. And she said, take me for a ride. I'm going to go, nope. Well, let's get, I, I, I can't. There's no foot pegs. There's no back seat. Well, let's get a back seat and foot pegs. No, no we're not going to. You can get your own bike. You can get your own license and we can ride together down the street, right? We can do that together. You on the back of this ain't going to happen. Nope, not going to happen. Nor my pet dog. Nope. It's not what I got it for. I got the Harley so I could uh, go out and achieve zen. Achieve zen. That's it. Get in my own head. All right. Chris says, what do you think about Chris Bledsoe's messages in music? How about mom is going to fix it all soon? Mom is going to run away to me, James Maynard Tool. Yeah, yeah. That's, uh, man, forget about Chris Bledsoe. How about Tool? Woo, man. There isn't, I mean, it doesn't matter what tool song. It does not, I, I swear to God, it doesn't matter. Radio goes full blast, and I am sucked in. Man, I love tool. I absolutely love tool. All right, let's see. Let's keep this going. Let's get as many in as we can. A uh, question, Jimmy What is your favorite Pink Floyd album? Animals. There you go. That was easy. That was fast. Lisa Davy. Great question. Animals. Best song on animals? Sheep. Takes me right there. It does. That Fender Roads. Oh. Animals. Animals. And, and hey, 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 hey. I get it when it comes to Pink Floyd. I do. I do. Dark Side of the Moon. I, I do wish you were here. I, 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 I get all of that. Right? The Wall. Whew. Mother. Man, I, you know, I, I get that. But for me, it's animals. Next up, John. John Lawrence. Are you a fan of Ingve Malmsteen's music? I am. Love Ingve Malmsteen. Okay, hold on. I, don't, I didn't plan on doing this. Check this out. Headphones back on. I'll just do this for you. Since uh, John was a plan on doing it. This, check it out. Ferrari sticker, right? Brass block. This is a miniature Fender Strat, custom made. Very expensive guitar, by the way. It's miniature. It's tiny. It's mini. It's a mini strat. Uh, this whole thing is probably two feet, two feet long. You see the whole thing. There's the whole guitar right there. It's a little mini strat. But it's signed by Ingve Malmsteen right there. It says, Jimmy, play loud. So yeah, Ingve, man, played this guitar, held this guitar. And uh I love Ingve. And uh I mean, Steeler, right? Okay, so that comes out, Rising Force, and and every, I, I was just blown away. I was blown away. Now, today, it's my opinion, Yngwie's best album was Trilogy. That song had vocals. It had hits. It had songs that were written like songs. Not to say that he doesn't do that. That's not what I'm implying. 
But that song was different than everything else. And now, when you go to uh, Rising Force, yeah, I get that, man. I get that. Yeah, there's of course, there's vocals on that. But Trilogy was different. And Ingve and the production on the album was different. And it was just like it went straight. It was it was proper. It was correct. It was mixed right. The songs were right. The music, everything, everything came together on that record. Huge Ingve fan. Um, I can't say enough. I, I I can't say enough. So there you go, John. Uh, I hope that answered that. I've got time for maybe uh, a couple more questions, and let me scroll through. Um, oh, it's another one from John. Back to back. Who do you who do you believe built all the ancient sites across the world? I don't know. No, it's not who they tell us built them. <laughs> that's that's the fact there, John. So I got Ingve and ancient sites around the world. Let's see what happened to Damon T. Barry. I do not know. I have not talked to Damon. Uh, in many, many, many years. Jessica Rodriguez coming in. Uh, it's a long one. Let's see. What do you think? What do you think the watchers? Oh, the watch. Okay, watches, watchers. The of the Anunnaki were my theory. They are tuning to. Oh, the watches. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I thought you meant watchers. Yeah, watches. Yes. Okay. My theory, they are tuning devices for different frequencies to travel through dimensions, multiverse, or through portals on Earth. I'm, I'll, I'll go with that, Jessica. I mean, it's it's not... It, it, it's jewelry, man. It's just, it's just a bracelet. Uh, no, I don't think so. That's not what it looks like to me. And uh, so, uh, yeah... Yeah, that's good. That's good, Jessica. I don't know. Maybe they were just watches. But here's here's the thing: when you look at the antic uh, antikith <laughs> the the antikithera mechanism uh, built by uh, whoever, right? Um, but uh, there's some guesses about who built it. But they didn't know, you know. And and now we know it was a an astronomical navigation device but it would also uh, predict the seasons and the eclipse and eclipses and, and things so uh it, it, what what that is there it could could have been a number of things could have been a dick tracy bringing apple watch don't know but it's not i can tell you what it's not it's not a piece of jewelry it's not ornamentation it's simply not. It's not. Jessica, uh, that may be the last question of the night, and it's a good one. Uh, um, oh, this is Stargazer. Uh, man, I've got 10 seconds. What's your thoughts on the full solar eclipse and devil's comment on the same day? Oh, wow. Okay. I think I talked about that earlier. I think it's crazy. And a 1,000 years ago, 2,000 years ago, those two events happening on the same day, the world would have lost its mind. Yeah, think about that. I think that's absolutely crazy. Um, what do you think about the knowledge of the forever time? Yeah, it's a great series. Um, uh, Jimmy, your your show helped me. This is from uh, my show helped me during a lot of tough times I had in the past year. Thank you for that, Laban. That is uh, very cool of you. How come aliens haven't taken the ISS astronauts if abductions are real? How do you know they haven't? How do you know that? I don't know. Anything that goes on the ISS stays on the ISS. Jimmy, any updates on John Teeter? I get them all the time. I, don't, I can't go into them now. I'm just squeezing these questions in. Just rolling them in. We're already uh, off of the main network here. Okay. I continue to scroll. Five, four, three, two, one. What night vision should I get? Betty Joe Jacks. Get threes. Twos are cheaper, but get threes. That's what you want. You want threes. You want threes. And uh, uh, like I said, you save money on twos, but the difference between two and three is literally night and day. And with that, 
I am going to get out of here. That wraps another week here on Fade to Black. Thank you, everybody. I love doing AMAs and AJAs. I know I didn't get to all of the questions. I tried. I tried. But it's just it's just so much fun. Fade to Black is produced by Hill J. Palm, Renee Newman, and Michelle Freed. Thank you to John Aside. Thank you to Bill. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you, Kevin. Webmasters, Drew the Geek, Music, Doug Aldrich. Intro, Space Boy, spaceboymusic.com. Fade to Black is produced by KJCR for the Game Changer Network, and this broadcast is owned and copyrighted 2024 by Fade to Black and the Game Changer Network, Inc. It cannot be rebroadcast, downloaded, copied, or used anywhere in the known universe without written permission from Fade to Black or the Game Changer Network. I'm your host, Jimmy Church. I'll see everybody on Monday. Tonight is my Friday. My weekend starts now. Oh, Monday, it's April Fool's Day. Guess who I've got on the show? Jason quit. He's back. And there's a reason. And it's April 1st. Get ready for this. It's a big one. I'll see everybody. Have a great weekend. I'll see you on Monday. Be safe. Go back, Lee Tappy.